We look at the first words of the Aseris Hadibris. What were the first words that Abishta spoke to Am Yisrael? What were the first words? Anechi Hashem Elikecha. And, and what happens when you translate that into English? Like every translation, it ruins it. The translation into English is, I am God, you're God. How many times have you heard that? Has it ever inspired you? <laughs> Has it ever reduced you to tears? I am God, you're God. Hi. Nice to meet you. Why do you repeat yourself? <laughs> I'm your God. What's I am God, you're God? That's why Rambam says that translation is terrible. If you translate literal word for word, it, it loses all its meaning. So let's try this. Anechi Hashem Elikecha means I, who am God, perfect, Elikecha, I want to be yours. Without you, I'm perfect. <laughs> but I don't want that. I want to be yours. Anechi Hashem Elikecha. And therefore, that's why I took you out of Mitzrayim because I need you. No wonder we said Nasev and Nishma. How can you how can you resist that? The Abishta says, I need you. Well then then whatever it is, yes. So in Kabbalah, it puts it in, in you know, Kabbalah language. Every mitzvah is like a limb of the Ebeshter. But the Ebeshter doesn't have any limbs. <laughs> so how does that help me understand anything? What it means is, just like every limb in your body is you, you didn't invent it, you didn't, you didn't acquire it one day, it's you. The same is true with mitzvahs. Now here's the beautiful thing about it. For most of our history, we were actually encouraged to do mitzvahs shaloi lishma. Do mitzvahs because it brings you honor and it brings you glory and it gives you a good life and it gets you into Gan Eden and it protects you from Gehenna. All sorts of benefits that people really appreciated. Because back in those days, maybe they understood what Gehenna was. They understood what Gan Eden was. It was motivating. Today you come to a Jew and say, would you like to put on film? You'll, be, you'll go to Gan Eden. <laughs> Where is that, near Miami? It means nothing. He said, no, no, I, I mean heaven. You'll go to heaven. <laughs> I don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> if you do this Aveda, if you're, you're going to go to Gehenna. It doesn't mean anything to anybody. In fact, most people, if they start doing mitzvahs, get nothing but criticism from their own family. Oh, look who became a tzaddik. Since when are you so religious? You get nothing but grief. <coughs> In the olden days, for a person to do a mitzvah lishma, that was considered wow. How in the world did you get on such a madrega? Today, it's the only way we know. Today, lishma is the only way, the only motivation we have left. I don't want to go to Gehenna, uh, to, to Gan Eden. I don't know what's so terrible about Gehenna. They say it's bad. I don't know. It's very hot. I just got back from Paraguay. It's very hot. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I, that, doesn't do, that doesn't do anything for me. You, you'll grow up, you'll be a Talmud Chacham, everybody will have derech for you. Where? Outside the yeshiva? Nobody has any derech for you. So, because we are so low, isn't that interesting, ironic? Because we are so low, we have no choice but to do the mitzvah on the highest level, which in the olden days was considered a tzaddik gomor. Today we do it because there's no other reason. Why else? You do a mitzvah because the Ebershta needs it. So what does it mean that the, the generation before Mashiach is either going to be Kulei Chayiv or Kulei Zakai, and depending on whether we're all deserving or all undeserving, Mashiach will come uh, in a pleasant way, or God forbid, not such a pleasant way. He'll come the last minute or he'll come early, depending on whether we're deserving or not deserving. The truth is, the generation before Moshiach will be completely deserving and completely not deserving. It's not an option. It's going to be both. That's why it's going to be a very confusing generation. It's going to be a very difficult time. And some of the Tanoim actually said, let Moshiach come, but I don't want to be there. So what does it mean? We're completely deserving and we're completely undeserving. It's not a contradiction. We are so far removed from holiness and from, and from godliness, we don't appreciate any of the rewards. I mean, they say the Badichava woke up the first day of the morning of, of Sukkot, and he couldn't wait to get to the Esrig, and he went through a glass door in his passion for the mitzvah. Baruch Hashem, we don't have that problem. <laughs> not going to go through no glass doors. <laughs> we'll have a coffee before. I mean, they, they, you know, we don't have that problem. And because of that, because we are so undeserving, when we do do a mitzvah, why do we do it? If God asks, if God says, if he, if he needs it, in the olden days, if you could do that, you were higher than a tzaddik. By default, we are today doing mitzvahs like the greatest of the tzaddikim in the past. You have this marshal of a king who announced that on a certain day, anyone who wants can come to the, to the palace and come directly to him and ask for whatever they need. Or just to meet with the king. So the great philosophers who showed up heard the debates that were going on in the library of the palace and they got so enamored with it, they got so carried away with it, they stayed there all day listening to the arguments, the philosophy, the beauty, the wisdom, and before they realized it, the day was over and it was too late to see the king. Others came who were very talented and they heard the royal orchestra playing, they stood there listening and got all carried away with the music and the beauty of it. And before they knew it, the day was over and they never got to see the king. And then there were those who were very impressed with the architecture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anybody who knew something, who was an expert in something, never got to see the king. But the simpleton, you know, the peasant, the country bumpkin, he comes into the palace, he says, where's the king? <laughs> How about lectures? You want to hear a lecture? Nah. How about some music? You want to hear beautiful music? I don't, I don't know. 
Where's the king? Where's the king? And he goes directly to the king. Shalom Aleichem. I need a cow. <laughs> and he got his cow. <clears throat> so we are like the peasant. We can walk through the palace and we're not impressed with anything. But if God says, if the king says, so do me a favor, put on film. Of course. Of course. That's Lishma. And ironically, we today are on that level. It can be, anyway. It has now become available to us, and it was not available to our ancestors. So we are the generation before Mashiach. We are completely undeserving, and we are completely deserving.